Yellowstone Caldera Supervolcano by Katherine Daniels Yellowstone National Park is not just unique for its beauty, but also because it sits on top of an active volcano, which produces tons of geological activity. This is one of the world's most geologically active places, shaken by up to 5,000 earthquakes every year, and with more geysers and hot springs than in the rest of the world combined. Why is Yellowstone so active? How did it form? And why here, in the heart of the Rockies? Geologists believe Yellowstone sits over a hot spot, a plume of superheated rock rising from the Earth's mantle. As North America slowly drifted over the hotspot, the Yellowstone plume punched through the continent's crust, leaving a breadcrumb trail of calderas created by massive volcanic eruptions along the Idaho Snake River Plain, leading straight to Yellowstone. The type of volcano that Yellowstone sits on is called a caldera. What is a caldera volcano? Caldera volcanoes are the extreme volcanoes. These are the most powerful and catastrophic types of volcanoes in a category by themselves because of the unique way in which they are formed. This type of volcano is shaped more like an inverse volcano. An enormous magma chamber bulges up from beneath the ground from the extremely high pressures of the trapped gases within. Once the accumulated pressure has been sufficiently released through a series of extremely powerful pyroclastic eruptions, the ground above the magma chamber subsides or caves in, leaving a large depression. What is a supervolcano? The term supervolcano implies an eruption of a magnitude 8 on the volcano explosive index, meaning more than a thousand cubic kilometers of magma are erupted. The In this gentle rolling landscape, where's the volcano? Geophysicist Robert Christensen realized that rock formations he had been studying for several years all around the edges of the park, in fact formed a giant circular ridge. He compared his findings on the ground with a series of NASA pictures taken between 1966 and 1970, confirming that the ring was the rim of a giant crater 45 miles across. Parts of the crater rim are still clearly visible today, but the other edge is almost out of sight. Three extremely large explosive eruptions have occurred at Yellowstone in the past 2.1 million years, with a reoccurrence interval of about 600,000 to 800,000 years. More frequent eruptions of basalt and rhyolite lava flows have occurred before and after the large caldera forming events. Scientists have Volcanic activity began in Yellowstone National Park region a little before 2 million years ago. Molten rock rising from deep within the earth produced three cataclysmic eruptions more powerful than any of the world's recorded history. The first caldera forming eruption occurred about 2.1 million years ago. The eruptive blast removed so much magma from its subsurface storage reservoir that the ground began, above it began to collapse into the magma chamber and left a giant depression in the ground a hole larger than the state of Rhode Island. The huge crater, known as Caldera, measured as much as 80 kilometers long, 65 kilometers wide, and hundreds of meters deep, extending from, Yellow from outside of Yellowstone National Park into the central area of the park. Later, activity shifted to a small region within the Island Park area of eastern Idaho, just southwest of Yellowstone and produced another large caldera-forming eruption 1.3 million years ago. 
and another huge eruption 640,000 years ago formed the Yellowstone caldera as we see. The three caldera forming eruptions respectively were about 6,700 and 2,500 times larger than the May 18, 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens in Washington State. Together, the three catastrophic eruptions expelled enough ash and lava to fill the Grand Canyon. In addition to the three climatic eruption activities associated with each of these three caldera cycles produced dozens of hundreds of small eruptions that produced both lava and pyroclastic plastic materials. deposit from a super eruption and yet we're over 50 miles from the source of the of the eruption the geologists have recreated what must have happened here on the day that Yellowstone exploded incandescent avalanches of ash raced out of the park in all directions so this is traveling at very high velocity um, easily over 100 miles per hour across the land surface and obliterating everything in its path. It was extremely hot when it arrived here, and perhaps as hot as, as 1,500 degrees Fahrenheit, to it twice a pizza oven. I mean, it's just very hot. So what would it have been like to be standing on this spot hundreds of thousands of years ago, on the day when the Yellowstone ash cloud roared over the horizon? That the impact of this would, would be uh, absolutely unimaginable. It would be, yeah. I think you would be disarticulated, burned, and, and unrecognizable, and it would be very difficult to find any of you. All of the evidence about the size of the super eruption helped solve the mystery of the missing volcano. Scientists realized that the super eruption was so enormous that it must have blown the volcano to pieces. Yellowstone has up to 5,000 earthquakes a year, even though it's in the stable heart of the North American continent. They reveal this gigantic reservoir of molten rock which created Yellowstone's crater when lava erupted out, and the ground above collapsed into the space left behind. And the seismic waves still slow down under Yellowstone today, showing that the magma chamber still lurks under the park. It's more than 30 miles long, 25 miles wide, and 10 miles in depth. But its size alters from year to year. Within an hour of a Yellowstone super eruption, pyroclastic flows could race across the countryside and engulf the valley of Jackson Hole and the town of Livingston, some 50 miles away. Within a 60 mile radius, 90% of any remaining people would be killed. A few might be blown to pieces in the initial blast. Most would suffocate in the heat of pyroclastic flows. But this would just be the beginning. Blowing across the states would be the mother of all ash clouds, an aerial mountain of deadly particles and debris. Yellowstone National Park is the site of a recurring supervolcano, an eruption so large that if it happens again, it would destroy nearly everything within 60 miles. But what would happen next as a mountain of ash begins to spread and then fall? The Yellowstone super eruption could throw ash 15 miles into the atmosphere. The fallout could cover half the United States. Three days after the eruption, the skies would be dark and deadly. 
From scientists' predictions, Naked Science has pieced together a picture of the country after three days of ashfall. At six times heavier than wet snow, wet ash would cause many roofs to collapse, clog up filters of cars, and ground aircraft across much of the western U.S. Any planes in flight would be in danger of crashing.